Hi, and welcome to Tea and Strumpets. I'm Kelsey, and I'm here to bring you our fourth episode in our Escondido Library Chats. Today, our chat is all about paranormal romance with Zoe Forward and Mariah on Kenman. So if you guys don't know, paranormal romance is like my second favorite genre after historical. So this is really exciting to talk to these fabulous authors. So this episode was recorded on May 16th, 2020. And just as a reminder, this was done via Facebook live stream. So the audio quality and editing is not quite what you're used to. But who doesn't love a great chat with two amazing authors? And also, just as a reminder, that this was recorded via video as well. So if you head on over to the Escondido Library YouTube, you can check out the visual along with the audio. And that is linked in the show notes below. So thank you again to the Escondido Public Library and librarian Jessica Buck for inviting us to participate in these wonderful chats with these amazing authors. And since it's spoopy season, join us next week for our spookiest episode of the year. I would announce that if I knew what the title was. However, this is a pre-recording and we haven't made that decision yet because we're working on it. (laughs) Hey-o! But besides the fact, tune in next week for our spookiest episode in our spoopy season. And we hope you enjoy our paranormal romance chat with authors Zoe Forward and Mariah on Kenman. Hello again, and welcome to the Escondido Public Library Romance Chats. In this series, we'll be talking to different authors that span the subgenre of romance. I'm Jessica Buck, librarian, and I am joined by Zoe from T. and Strepitz Podcast. (laughs) And the other Zoe, our author. We have two Zoes, so (laughs) it's going to be a really fun episode. Zoe um, Wernick, at least up in my view, is up there. She (laughs) is... Part of our library's romance book club between the covers and her podcast is devoted to historical romance novels. So this romance chat series began with the hope to bring together romance authors and romance readers. So we are all happy that you decided to join us today. During this chat, I will be monitoring the Facebook comments. So if you have any questions you want to ask the authors, um, just put it in the comments and we'll try to get to them. So before um, I introduce the author, Zoe's going to give a little introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm one of the Zoes, Zoe W. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've never had to say before in my life. So great. <laughs> Fun experience. Um, and before we get to these fabulous authors joining us today, I wanted to introduce their romance subgenre that we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about today. So while both of our authors today do write in more than one subgenre, many of our questions will focus on paranormal romance. And first to describe paranormal romance, I liked the statement that I found that paranormal blends the real with the fantastic. So paranormal romance generally blends together themes from fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Commonly, you'll find romantic relationships between humans and vampires, shapeshifters, ghosts, and other entities of a fantastic or otherworldly nature. And paranormal romances can also include books featuring characters with psychic abilities like telekinesis or telepathy. And while its roots harken all the way back to gothic fiction, its most recent revival has been spurred by technology. And in fact, paranormal romances are a fast-growing trend in the romance genre today. Yes, and today we are joined by two wonderful authors, Zoe Forward, our other Zoe, and Mariah Ankenman. Zoe Forward is an award-winning author and a hopeless romantic who can't decide between paranormal and contemporary romance, so no surprise, she writes both. (laughs) Her novels have won numerous awards, including The Prism, Reader's Choice, Heart of Excellence, Golden Quill, Caroline Reader's Choice Award, and the Bookseller's Best Award. When she's not typing at her laptop, she's cheering her son on at baseball, chasing after the toddler, or cleaning up the newest pet mess from the menagerie that occupies her house. She's also a board-certified veterinarian, fun fact. Her most recent release is Ask Me to Game, Game Lords Book 3. And our second author, Mariah Ankeman, is a best-selling author who lives in the beautiful, 
Rocky Mountains with her two rambunctious daughters and loving husband who provides ample inspiration for her heart stopping. <laughs> I love that part. He hates that part. <laughs> Mariah loves to lose herself in a world of words. Her favorite thing about writing is when she can make someone's day a little brighter with one of her books. Her most recent release is Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having us. Hi, thank you. <laughs> cool information in both of your bios. Like <laughs> super fun little tidbits there. I would love to ask you guys all sorts of personal questions now. But <laughs> before I digress too much, I think we should get into some of our questions that we had planned. <laughs> so, and talk a little bit more about romance. So, um, we like to ask all of our authors, cause I think this is a really interesting question to find out when did you first start reading romance and what inspired you to make the journey from reader to writer? So rather than com compete back and forth, I'll toss mm -hmm. it to one of you guys first. And then, <laughs> um, so how about we start with Mariah for this one? Um, well, I'm a late bloomer in the romance world. I didn't discover romance till I was 25 and I was at the library and I saw a book and I know you're not supposed to do this, but I said, this cover is cool. I think I'll check out this book. So I checked out the book and I started reading. It was a paranormal and I started reading and then I get to one of the scenes and I was like, oh, I think this is romance. I think I love romance. And from then on, I was hooked. I devoured Every single book in the library, everyone in the library knew my name. The security guard knew my name because I was there every day just devouring the romance section. I was like, oh, I love this. I can't get enough. And honestly, I've almost stopped reading every other genre there is since I found romance. So um, who would do that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And I'd always uh, been a writer. And I always knew I wanted to be a writer, but I had mostly written like fantasy up until then. And then I was like, noticing all my fantasy always had those tiny little love story subplots. And I was like, mm, subplot, main plot. <laughs> that's what we're doing now. I love it. So that's, that's, how, kind of me. <laughs> that's how I came to romance a little bit too, was a similar, similar story, right? But I was always a fantasy reader and loved all of those subplots that are kind of have those romantic entanglements. And so then all of a sudden, you know, when you find romance and you realize that actually that's what you've kind of been looking for all this time, it's really nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so how about you, Zoe? How did you start reading and then become uh, a writer? Well, I, I think I discovered it way back in high school when my sister turned me on to it. And I'd always been kind of a hopeless romantic. I'm one of those who watches movies, you know, like I'll watch The Lord of the Rings and I love it, but I don't care about anything but what's going on with the romance. <laughs> I'm just one of those. And it was funny to discover romance because you're like, well, that's it. That's all I want to read. I don't care about the rest of the story. <laughs> um, but then because, you know, I was on the track, I, I didn't really get to get to writing. I was a late bloomer with writing. <laughs> Um, I would read romance between studies at school when I went to college and vet school. You just have to turn your brain off. And I was like, I'm just, I would go to the store or the library and just get like a pile of romance books. And that's all I do on my breaks. And then one day, I think I read a couple that were just awful. And I was talking, I mean, because, you know, you read through a bunch and all of a sudden you'll hit a couple and you're like, oh, these are just not quite what I was looking for. And I was telling my sister about it and she's like, well, do you think that you could do any better? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I can. <laughs> and so I tried it and it was so much fun to just put the whole story together and have fun with it. Yeah. I um, relate to that very much. I sometimes have that feeling like, well, what if I, what if I wrote it instead of just read it? I don't know. Not there yet, but you know, it does, does come through the head, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So what attracted you to paranormal romance, either as a reader or well, as writers? Let's see who we started with last time. So Zoe, the sign first. <laughs> um, I like the um, 
the world building and just there's I just find in paranormal you can do so much more with the story I mean there's just no limits you can just I mean you do have to as a writer you have rules you have to establish rules stick with your rules you can't change things but it just it just has so much more you can have it take place now but the world can be very complex and have all of these different things. It's much more um, creative, at least for me, although I love contemporary. I think contemporary is really fun to write as well. I think contemporary is more about voice, but yeah, I always, and I think it also comes down to who you discover first in paranormal. So if you, you sort of run into some of those uh, fantastic authors that are out there is your first introduction to it. You're like, oh my gosh, these guys are incredible. And it just, uh, that's sort of for me, discovering some of those like J.R. Ward and Sherilyn Kenyon. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I am in on this. So, yeah. I got the uh, honor, I would say, to hear Sherilyn Kenyon speak um, at uh, an RWA event uh, a year or so ago in my local chapter. Um, it was a while back and it's the only one I've been to so far, um, you know, because of things. But um, she was really, really, really interesting. And her life story is fascinating. And she's just full of, uh, I don't know, uh, conviction. And I can only imagine what it translates to on the page um, because I have not yet read her, I will admit, but she was extremely, extremely inspiring just as a human being. <laughs> so I can only imagine her books are similar. That's actually the book I picked up at the library that led me to romance was a Sherilyn Kenyon. Ah, so yeah, because I've always been into fantasy. I mean, my favorite movie is the never ending story. You can Aww. see that's Falcor. And then I also have the owl from the labyrinth holding the dark crystal. Wow. So you could kind of say that fantasy and paranormal is like my it's life. Oh my yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a part of me. And I love, I love it because, you know, contemporary is really fun and there's a lot of things you can do with it, but you can just do so much more with paranormal and you can really stretch your creativity and just bring in so many different things and that's why I'm drawn to it. Love it. That's um, really interesting. And it's, I, I will admit I'm completely stuck in Regency England. Like I, I just have not left. <laughs> I've read now four contemporary novels and I haven't yet read a paranormal novel. So we'll kind of get up around to a question about that later, but <laughs> um, especially talking about fantasy and, and um, you know, the, and kind of the elements that are similar in that as a fantasy reader, you know, I've got my fantasy stack over there and my romance stack over there behind me, but um, it's now I'm just like, I think maybe I've been missing something. So, so, but to get back to you guys, what kind of paranormal romance have you written? Um, because there's a lot of different stuff. So I'm curious um, for our uh, listeners here, um, for you guys to talk a little bit more about what you what you went with and maybe why. So I think we start with Mariah this time. Um, so I wrote uh, the Damon series, which they're Damons, not demons, <laughs> commonly misconstrued uh, sometimes, um, but they are based off of Aristotle's idea that human beings have muses or daemons, and there's good ones and there's bad ones. And so I kind of went, ooh, what if they were real people instead of little things on your shoulders? So I wrote, it's, um, it's in our world, and the supernatural world is there, but humans don't know it. And so there's UA daemons, who are the good ones, and the Keiko daemons, who are the bad ones. And there's this battle for human souls because the Keiko daemons suck human souls. And, uh, <laughs> and along with the daemons, there's all kinds of other paranormals. There's vampires, there's werewolves, there's telas, which are people with telepathy and telekinesis, psychics, witches. So I just kind of, I can't limit myself. I love them all. I just grab them all, <laughs> put them in a big pot, and I'm like, yes, all the paranormals. Sounds super interesting and fun. <laughs> and how about you, Zoe? Um, right now I have three different series that do paranormal and they're all different. So I have one that's very classic vampires and werewolves. That's the blood wars. There's the second one of that's coming out in the fall. That one is 
fairly traditional with vampires and werewolves and war and very interesting. Um, and the second one I have is about witches, but it's not traditional witches. I kind of went off. Um, they're actually descendants of uh, Greek goddesses <laughs> who have been labeled witches over time because they have some special powers. And it's very interesting because you can have their seven different sisters and they each have different powers. And then the guys who don't want to have anything to do with all of this, who get sucked into all of it. Very, that, that one is just hilarious from start to finish. The third one that I have is the first series that I ever read. It's actually Egyptian <laughs> because I love Egypt. And that one is different because most people are like, eh, I don't know Egypt. That's kind of weird. Nobody does that. But I just, again, had a lot of fun with it because it's, it's modern and contemporary. And there are these warriors who've been around forever and they're just protecting our world. But then they fall in love with regular ladies. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun. Awesome. That's uh, <laughs> sounds pretty epic too. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, all right. Um, so we have now a cool question from one of our uh, Facebook watchers. Um, so Jessica, did you want to ask that one or did you, did you want? Sure. Why not? Why not? Okay. I'm curious. <laughs> So it is a multi-question question. question. <laughs> so how has being a romance writer affected your own personal romances? Has it enhanced your romances or do you find yourself disappointed in reality? And do your partners wonder if they are one of your characters? So would anyone like to start that one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm... Let's see. I've been with my husband. We started dating way back in college. We've been together many, many years. Um, and no, no, I wouldn't say that writing romance has affected my romance or made me feel like dissatisfied with romance. Cause I think that's a misconception. A lot of people have, they're like, Oh, romance. Now every woman wants a, you know, eight pack man who's chiseled and sensitive with his feelings and blah, blah, blah. And everyone wants Fabio. And you're like, well, Fabio hasn't been on the cover since the eighties. And no, um, I think it has improved my communication with everyone around me because at its heart, romance novels are about communication. They're about emotions. They're about opening yourself up, recognizing maybe some of your strengths, some of your failings as a character. And so, of course, as a writer, you do that. And so I think uh, it's definitely improved my communication in all aspects of my life, including with my spouse. Um, and while he has never wondered if he's a character, boy, my sisters do. <laughs> They're like, hey, did you make me that, that mean girl character? I'm like, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Zoe, it's your turn. <laughs> I think Mariah said it well. I mean, it's sort of, it's the same with me. I've been together with my husband for a very long time. And so I don't think that it, I mean, I don't think that you bring that into what you're writing necessarily, but it is definitely, it's funny about the sister sort of thing. I get that too. <laughs> and people will also make comments to that um, about that, but no, I mean, I think it's, it's, again, it's, it's creativity and, mm -hmm. it, and that's one of the, um, wonderful things about the genre is that there is that sort of, um, element of it. And it's a safety element too, because, you know, as a reader that, you're going to find that happily ever after in the book and you're going to get there. There may be a lot of angst getting there, but, you know, <laughs> life can be very tricky and um, painful. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can bring a lot of that into the book, but you do know in the end <laughs> that it's going to be okay. And I think that, that, um, that part of it is, is uh always been so important to me. And I think a part of that also reflects, you know, when you have such a, a stable and loving relationship, so you kind of know how to bring that 
to the end, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, I want to comment also as a reader of romance, you know, um, if I may be so bold, um, you know, kind of about the question, you know, has has it enhanced romance, you know, personally for me, or do I find myself disappointed in reality? And as a voracious romance reader, I would say um, no. And I, I, I echo what uh, Mariah said, too, which is just the, the increased communication. And I echo what Zoe said, which is, when you enter into this book, you have this contract where you know things are going to work out in the end. So you can emotionally invest in the story in a different way than you can necessarily in a book you don't know the ending. Um, And so that just allows you to explore uh, the story in, I think, a really different way than many other genres. You don't have that anxiety necessarily of what's going to happen or what's going to happen next. And you still have, you still get some little moments of that for sure. Um, but, but you know, things are going to turn out. Okay. And it's just so different, but on top of that, some, something I read, I saw someone say this so much more eloquently than I'm going to say it, uh, at all in this moment, but to the, the, the idea of like, you know, um, being disappointed in reality. I think there's, there, it's, it's just as easy for romance readers to understand and, and identify the split between reality and a book as it is for people who read murder mysteries, you know, all the time. You, you don't want to go out and see more murder in the world necessarily or, or, or whatnot. Some, again, somebody else said this way more eloquently than me, but, um, you know, I feel the same way with romance. You know, I, I really enjoy reading those stories for so many reasons. And, uh, and I think that they, they do me a lot of good, but anyhow, (laughs) enough about me. (laughs) Back to obviously though, I'm a passionate romance fan. (laughs) Um, so you guys both write contemporary as well, as we have mentioned in your bios and you guys have kind of mentioned yourself. So, uh, we have a couple questions kind of related to that, which is, do you find there to be challenges to write different subgenres, and if so, what those are? And then, what attracted you to these two specific subgenres? Because I think you both only, if I'm not mistaken, write paranormal and contemporary at this time, <laughs> not to say the future. <laughs> um, so I'm curious um, about, yeah, the challenges and what brought you to these two. Um, Zoe, do you want to start us off? Sure. So, I mean, I think I write these two genres because they're the two I love to read. And so they're the two that, I mean, they're just what I love to do and to read. And so, you know, paranormal is its own thing. It's again, a lot of world building. And then I decided to move to contemporary and it is, it's different because it's a lot more about voice and story and tropes and you know it's it's a tad bit more constructed I hate to say that but it is then I felt like paranormal you can move a little bit within the story Um, and sometimes it's interesting because for my process for paranormal I can be a little bit more of a panster instead of a plotter like I know where it's going to go but I can have the characters and it kind of evolves but for contemporary for me I have to really like organize the whole story <laughs> before I can get it down. And then you can really focus on getting the fun. Cause I really like funny stories and things. I mean, I just, I can't stand it when it's not funny. So that, and that part has to kind of come out once you understand everybody who's in it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, yeah. These are the two that I love reading. So they're the two that I love writing. Um, and yeah, they, they're both, they both have their complications. Like with, you know, paranormal, you have to create an entire world. Even if they're still in our world, you have to give your characters rules and you have to follow those rules. Cause especially if you're writing a series and you're like in the first book, they couldn't go out in the sunlight, but all of a sudden in the third book, they are, the readers will go, uh, uh-uh, you can't do that. But the same for contemporary, if say you're writing about a veterinarian and you're not a veterinarian and some reader goes, wait a minute, a veterinarian would never do that thing that you said in your book. So you have to research there too. So they both have uh, complications when you're writing. They're just different between making sure your rules are consistent and making sure the real world's rules are consistent. But they're both really fun. And I agree uh, with Zoe. I love humor. I started out with paranormal and then somehow fell into rom-com which works out really well because I'm a giant dork. 
and it just it it just kind of flowed from there. I love putting humor in. Well, I, I uh, as a reader, uh, love reading humor because it just, you know, it adds that other layer into a story. And um, I, I think that uh, people who can write humor are just beyond me. I mean, I, I, that, I think I, that is one of the most intimidating things I think about uh, thinking about writing is how the heck am I going to be funny, right? So hats off, um, you guys, on, on getting that in there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about paranormal romance and what it means to you. And is there anything specific that a story needs to have to make it good in the subgenre, in your opinion? Yeah, like when you guys think about paranormal romance, I mean, you already talked about your, you know, the books that you write, but like if you had to, I don't know, what does paranormal romance mean to you? It's kind of an open question. <laughs> I think Baraya was maybe who we start with this time. Okay. Um, really, uh, for me, paranormal romance just means anything that is not possible in this world or not provable in this world. Um, so anything, you know, witches, vampires, fae, um, anything like that where it's a character who has something that you can't explain and it makes the world a little bit more magical and fun. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I see paranormal. And, and it allows you that little bit of an escapism where you can kind of detach from this world, especially when it's so hard to be in this world and, uh, and escape into another one. And that's why I love it so much. And I just really think it has to be written, you know, written well, engaging, draw you into the story. That's all it really needs. What about you, Zoe? I think that's well said. I mean, for me, uh, paranormal has always been about kind of, um, the mythology and the lore and kind of having fun with it. Like you can go back and you can take your traditional vampires and werewolves and, you know, you can kind of tweak it a little bit and just have fun with it. Of course you establish your rules, but you just kind of tweak it a little bit. And then you can just have so much fun with where that takes you. And for me, that's what, you know, whether you're reading a, a fantastic paranormal that's been written or you're working on one yourself, it just it just allows for this whole world to open up. You're like, oh, yeah, because in your mind, you're going, yeah, I read I, I remember that about that, you know, that that Greek goddess thing that I heard about in school. But that's cool that you could take it to that, you know, that, that that's what's going on because it works within your world. So your mind can kind of go, oh, that's that's fun. And, and that's paranormal to me is just about fun and bringing in the fantasy that Mariah is saying. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So within paranormal romance, um, I wanted to talk about tropes because as I mentioned, I have not yet read a paranormal romance. Um, shame, shame on me. Um, but um, I'm curious, do we see any tropes that are specific to paranormal, you know, that you wouldn't really see anywhere else kind of in the same way um, and or what kind of tropes will readers encounter in paranormal romance? Um, so maybe starting off with Zoe. Yeah, I think the, the one trope that the, the only one I can really think of that you really see in paranormal and not other places is that sort of destined mate kind of idea. It just, cause it, it's, it's so fantastical and just not reality. <clears throat> every other trope in every other genre is in there. I mean, you see a lot of force protector and enemy to lovers and all the same sort of tropes. I mean, all of those show up, but I don't know, Mariah, could you come up with any others other than Destined Mate that was kind of a trope that you thought was only paranormal? <laughs> no, I would, I would have to say the Destined Mate or the Faded Mate. I mean, that's, that's what I use in my paranormals. I call them Tiras, yes. you know, or the, they're the soulmates. They're the ones where 
something happens and you get a mark or you get some kind of identifying thing telling you that this is your one person that fate has decreed you be with and you can have a lot of fun with it. But yeah, destined mates, fated mates, whatever you want to call them. That's, I think that's a pretty heavy paranormal trope. Yeah. And I certainly would never call Twilight a romance novel. However, there are some of those, those parallels, but and many, many more people have probably seen, seen or, or know of Twilight, you know, but just because of its pop culture-ness, um, which it does, it does use that in part of its storyline um, too. So anybody who might be not familiar with romance or paranormal romance that's listening or watching right now, you know, if you if you have <laughs> read or or seen Twilight, that's the uh, werewolf and the the daughter. <laughs> yeah, they imprint, right? Imprint. That's what they yeah. call it, imprinting. Yeah. Imprinting. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but I um I know that um there are some really brilliant uh, faded mates uh, options within the paranormal world. Um, so I'm gonna have to get on that. <laughs> um. Jessica, yeah, you're... so talking about paranormal romance and um, Twilight, other books, <laughs> other if books. someone is <laughs> diving into just paranormal romance itself for the first time, do you have any suggestions for what they should read, what they should start with? Your books totally work as an answer to this question. <laughs> these are my so, favorite questions <laughs> okay i think we have we're gonna start with <laughs> i know everyone's like suggest me a book i'm like you're not ready for this sit down let's talk um so of course you know if you like greek mythology mixed into our worlds definitely check out the Damon series they're very good books um but I would highly recommend if you like vampires, Sherilyn Kenyon, Lindsay Sands, Carolyn Sparks. If you like uh, paranormal in our world, that like gently eases you into it. Um, Adrienne Bell, the uh, Exiles of the Realm series, fantastic. Um, Cynthia Eden has amazing paranormal. Holly Trent, AC Arthur. Um, there's a million more I'm missing, but those are some good starting authors uh, that I would highly recommend. Awesome. Those are great. The one other I thought of, um, if you like historical and you're thinking, oh, you know, I kind of want to try it a little bit. I, in my first paranormal um, for me was actually Jude Devereux's Remembrance which I don't know if you guys, because that's the one that flies through time. So it's sort of time travel a little bit, but it was really interesting, but it's kind of a way to sort of ease in, but you still get that moving through historical, you kind of get a feel for it a little bit. Um, and I think all those authors that you mentioned are fantastic. I mean, I would add J.R. Ward, but she's oh yes, definitely a step into true hotness. So you got to be ready oh, yeah. to see for that one. That heat uh, meter is going up. <laughs> but yes, yes. I mean, I think I have a whole shelf over here of her signed ones. So <laughs> yes, um, I'm trying to think anything else. Uh, the other I thought of that was another one that's kind of good, again, to ease into a feel for it might be like uh, Linda Howard uh, wrote oh. Sun of the Morning, which I always loved, which I don't know why. I think that's another sort of time travel between times. And it's got kind of a lot of magic in it. It's really neat. So um and then there's some really good uh, young adult paranormals because that's also a pretty hot, hot genre. I just read a great one by Pintup's Dunn's new one. Uh, was, yes. That book was so good. <laughs> I loved it. Pintup Dunn is fantastic. Yes, that's her newest. Which I didn't mention her. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Melissa Marr too. Yes. Melissa Marr yes. has great, uh, the Wicked Lovely series. Oh, <laughs> it's a good one too. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna have to take this list and post it for people because <laughs> I don't there's too many names. <laughs> Seriously. And and it it is funny you mentioned like the historical too, because it um, I have a historical romance podcast and um, you know, when we were trying to find a book for Halloween, well, Halloween doesn't really 
have, you know, it wasn't really a holiday back then, but we were trying to like get, get creative with it. And what we did find is there are a few uh, authors who are writing kind of paranormal romances that are a little bit interesting and they've got some ghosts and some spooky stuff, but set in the time periods we love to read. So we are thinking next, next season, uh, maybe we'll go that direction during the spooky season. So um, definitely some exciting and, and definitely I haven't checked out, I haven't read, um, I believe you said it was Jude Devereaux, um, her, her, uh, yes. so it's her best really. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, definitely Please. interested to check that out. So <laughs> thank you guys for all that. Um, but I wanted to talk also a little bit more about your contemporary books. Um, so do you, are your contemporary books like miles, miles, miles different from your paranormal titles or like what are the similarities and differences and, and what kind of contemporary stories do you guys write? So um, I cannot remember who we started with last time. Um, let's start with Zoe. Okay. A minor miles different. <laughs> I really only have one series and it's actually a game. It's, it's a, a sort of professional gamers, um, like e-gamers, which is, and you don't have to know anything about gaming at all. I just thought it was such a neat world and there's so much going on right now. I mean, anybody who's sat, you know, I mean, these days we've been stuck in our house. We're all sitting in front of our little games. And I just, I start, I, I went down a rabbit hole one day of these people who do this professional gaming. And I thought, well, what if you put, you know, like a, a girl in this world? Cause there aren't a lot of girls what's going on with them. So it's really a neat, um, that one sort of merges suspense with, um, it has a suspense sort of overlay. It's a three book series on who's the bad guy. And then it's got three individual stories in this sort of gaming world. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. hey, gamers. <laughs> yeah, gamers. Um, gamers yay. Uh, so I have a small town cowboy series that uh, has a dash of suspense in it. There's always a bad guy in that series. Um, that was really fun to write because I kind of based it off my hometown up in the mountains. Um, and cowboys, who doesn't love a sexy cowboy? Come on. They're always fun to write. Um, and recently I started, I stumbled into rom-com. I didn't know I wrote rom-com and my critique partner was like, this is really funny. It's a rom-com. I'm like, it is? Okay. Um, so my latest two series, um, I have one about a trio of wedding planners and they, you know, plan everybody's wedding, but their own. And uh, of course they all end up falling for wonderful, wonderful men. And then I also have uh, my latest release is set in a distillery because I love me my vodka. I'm a big fan of the martini. And uh, my husband was like, why don't you write a book about a distillery? And then we can go to distilleries as research. And I'm like, I'm in. Let's do that. Um, so that one, uh, that one was really fun to write, not only the research part, but just also writing about a bunch of siblings running their own business and, and them falling in love with their various significant others. So yeah, I stumbled into rom-com somehow and discovered that I loved it. That's so cool. And I love, you know, pairing a, a passion with your, you know, with your career, right? And that's, that's a great way to, to get things in there. So super cool. Um, so now we have kind of a tough question for you guys, which is, do you have a favorite romance novel? So, and the answer no is perfectly acceptable, but we'll, we'll, we'll require a reason for why. <laughs> So, uh, Mariah, do you want to talk? About oh, it's so hard. Don't make me pick. Um, I think I have a favorite one in like each genre that I read or what mood I'm in. But my overall, overall favorite one, I would have to say, is Hunt by Adrian Bell. Um, it is a paranormal, but it's set in our world. So it's one of those you can ease in. It's part of the exiles of the realm. Um, I just... I love it because it's humorous and of course it's sexy and uh, there's a hint of paranormal, but it's still our world. And the uh, heroine has um, anxiety disorder. And I love how truthfully and accurately uh, the author portrayed it. It is just a shining of example of how someone lives with chronic anxiety and how in the end it isn't, you know, cured by the power of love 
she just lives with it and and he loves her as she is and it's beautiful and it's always my comfort read sounds great mm-hmm. zoe uh do you have I, one i don't have a favorite <laughs> i could not <laughs> i was because it i i'm like mariah in every category i'm like yeah in in contemporary i like this and in historical i like this so i have i have many i kind of can dwindle down i have authors that i just love and i think all of us who read these genres <laughs> just have those those authors that you know and if you just know you need a good book you just go and you find one and it's like just pulling on a comfortable blanket <laughs> just reading that author no matter whether it's a new one or an old one by one of your favorites so well I I, (laughs) yeah I empathize with that because I know that we're asking a first of all a very tough question and kind of an unfair question by asking that Mm -hmm. because I also can't answer that with a one book you know I I've been even you know thinking about this question more because I usually ask um, anyone who's on the podcast that we interview the question because I, I do think it's a really interesting answer and I I feel like the the overall theme is even if someone has a a favorite, they kind of feel the same way that a lot of authors are perfect for a certain mood or, you know, a certain time of your life or whatever it is. And so, yeah, I've been like trying to narrow down maybe a top five for myself and man, that's really hard. Like, I don't, I don't even know. And I, like I said, read primarily one genre, so I should have it easier. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. So kudos to you both for tackling that, that tough one. (laughs) Okay. So I have my favorite question that I get to ask during these is what is your favorite library memory? And I don't know who we started with last time. (laughs) I think we started with me. So Zoe. Is it me? Zoe. My favorite um, memory is more from childhood and just um, something I lived in a really small coastal community in North Carolina and they always did um, a really big summer program (laughs) which was just you know we would read books and draw pictures which a lot of libraries still do it but for me it was always the most important because not only could you hang out with the other kids but you just love seeing they would actually put all of the pictures up on the wall <laughs> and you just love seeing oh my picture was chosen you know and it just if for me it just bonded me with the library and just forced me to read a lot of different things in the library trying to draw the best picture I was just competitive so <laughs> <laughs> that's always just for me the way my introduction to the library and how much I just loved it yeah um, yeah we still do summer reading programs a lot of libraries did spring programs too all virtual because of what's going on and we're in the process of planning our summer program it's going to be all virtual too so that's going to be fun <laughs> okay Mariah I know you kind of shared a little bit I'm excited to hear um, <laughs> I have I have two that kind of match up with each other. Um, So in elementary school, our school librarian, if you wrote a book and brought it to her, she would laminate it and bind it and put it in a, they had a special shelf just for student written books. And so I, it was awesome. So I wrote George and the Green Glob about a little boy who had a monster who lived under his bed and they became best friends. My mother said it was fantastic. (laughs) Um, So I wrote it and gave it to her and she laminated it and put it up there and it had the little Dewey Decimal card thing so people could check it out. And it was so awesome seeing my book in the library and my friends could check it out. And then fast forward to now and my local library got my book and put it on the shelf. And I went to the library and I saw my book on the shelf that anyone could check out. And I took a selfie with it and it was just the coolest thing. I got that same feeling when I was in elementary school. I'm like, yay, people can read my brain now. (laughs) That's so fabulous. Oh my gosh. That like warmed my heart just hearing about it. And I didn't have that experience. So we have just a couple more questions to ask. Uh, to kind of wrap up here. And the first one is what is next for you? So we'll start off with Mariah. 
Um, I have the next uh, wedding planner book, Mile High Happiness book, coming out in the fall. It is called The Roommate Problem, and it's pitched as the odd couple, but with lots of sexual tension. Um, it's going to be a really fun one. And then after those, uh, there's going to be a spinoff series from that mile high firefighters. So some hot firefighters are coming at you in 2021. I think that maybe a lot of us could use that in 2021. I think we can. (laughs) Definitely. Zoe, what's next for you? Um, I've got the next in my blood war series, which is the vampire werewolves coming out in the fall. Um, and this one is, it, it's kind of the Scarlet Pimpernel basis, but it's a she is the one who's rescuing the werewolves who are persecuted. It's, it's so much fun. And of course, she's a vampire rescuing werewolves. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, and then I've also got next year in a new contemporary series starting that's, um, <laughs> it's kind of going to be a fake relationship about that's, that's going to be just a lot of fun. It, it's going to involve X games athlete. So <laughs> well, that's um, look at you go like so super diverse. That's, that's so cool. And I'm, I'm really interested. I love the Scarlet Pimpernel idea. I uh, love the musical, The Scarlet Pimpernel. It's kind of a little bit under the radar, but those of us who, who know it might, may love it. Um, it's, it's really great. So, um, some great music in that really cool. Mm-hmm. And we've got okay. one last question. Okay. Jessica, I think you're on that one. Right there. Okay. So where can readers find you and where can they get your books? I know the answer to the, the second one too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Zoe? Um, They can always find me at my website, which is just zoeforward.com. And my books are on every online vendor, (laughs) pretty much, and in some libraries. Most of the time, the libraries will have it more as an ebook. Okay, and Mariah? Um, You can also find me on my website. It's just mariahinkeman.com. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, you're also going to see a lot of my aerial videos because I love doing aerials and a lot of my vodka confusions. So that's a fun place to find out about the weirdness that is me. Um, and you can find my books. Um, you can order them through your local indie stores. Love Sweet Arrow, The Ripped Bodice, Denver mm-hmm. Book Bar. Also on any online, you know, Kindle, Nook, iBooks, all that. Yeah, and I will let everyone watching know that your books are available for checkout through Libby on Hoopla. And we now have Cloud Library, and that should be live um, starting next week. So they can also get your books through that as well. So I just want to thank you again, all of you, for joining us, our wonderful author, Zoe Mariah, and our moderator, Zoe. <laughs> thank you. And um, before I wrap it up, I'm going to let Zoe talk about her Pride and Joy, the wonderful Tea and Strumpets podcast. Yes, I'll keep it brief. But um, if uh, you don't know about my podcast, uh, we talk about historical romance novels, typically Regency Victorian novels. And uh, we also get to talk to awesome authors uh, like the ones that we talked to today. And uh, we're everywhere you get podcasts. And we're called Tea and Strumpets. And you can check us out on our website, which is romancepod.com. Awesome. Thank you. So just a quick reminder that right now our spring virtual activity challenge is going on right now through May 31st. You still have time to participate. You just go on our website, make an account, um, log your activities, and then you could win e-gift cards. Our website also has a list of all the free digital resources we have available, like Libby, Hoopla, and Cloud Library. And our calendar has the full list of all of our virtual activities that are going on. I've never said virtual (laughs) so many times before. So we hope to see you next week, May 23rd, for our next chat with authors Avery Flynn and Stacey Actor. So thank you, everyone, for being here. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
Tea and Strumpets is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Hey, everybody. We are Learning the Tropes. I'm Erin. I'm Clayton. And I'm the romance novel veteran. And I'm the virgin. And every week we read a different romance novel and then we talk about what we loved about it. We talk about all of our favorite tropes. We talk about only one bed, secret places. Secret places. That's mine. You stole it. (laughs) Every trope under the sun. Mm-hmm. And to give you a little taste of our show, we're going to play a clip from an episode where we reviewed Lorian Donner's Fury. Justice was a secret perv. He wanted to bust in and see sex. Oh, I mean, we can tell you every single time they had sex or anything, Justice busted in. And it's like, just be cool, dude. Uh-huh. But also, Fury, put a sock on the door. Like, just be like, I'm banging my girlfriend. Yeah. Don't come in. <laughs> Bro code. <laughs> Do the new species not know about bro code? Learning the Tropes comes out every Wednesday, and you can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. So come check us out. 